So in the previous stanzas, we saw that the author is embarking on a journey late afternoon on a Whitsun where the journey is very tiring because of the tormenting heat of the sun and how each township one after another is new and nondescript, nothing special. Now in the third stanza, there is something that he notices only after quite a while the journey has proceeded. Let's see. At first, I didn't notice what a noise the weddings made each station that we stopped at. Sun destroys the interest of what's happening in the shade. And down the long cool platforms, whoops and skulls, I took for porters larking with the nails and went on reading. So what is the noise that the poet didn't notice at first? The noise of weddings made at each station. It does not mean that weddings were being conducted at railway stations, but it's about the relatives and friends who are at the railway station bidding goodbye to the new couple, newly wedded couple. So Whitson is the season of weddings and so at this season each and every station that the train stops at will definitely have a party of the bride and the groom accompanied by relatives and friends. That is the scene that the poet is mentioning. At first he didn't notice the noise but later on he notices what a noise that was made by weddings at each railway station. But then he says that sun destroys the interest of what's happening in the shade. It can be uh, understood in two different ways. One, uh, when you are uh, in out in the sun, the bright sunlight blinds you so that you can't see clearly what's happening in the shade. So that's the literal meaning. The second meaning is that we have already seen the scorching heat that is already fatiguing the passengers. So the beholder or the passenger, the poet, is really exhausted and because of the heat of the sun that has looted away all his energy, that has drained away all his energy, he has lost to lost his interest to find what is happening in the platform. And down the long cool platforms, whoops and skulls, I took for potters larking with the males and went on reading. So you can definitely see potters uh, lifting heavy weights. So here you can see the potters are playing with the males carried by the train and the auditory image of the breaking sound of the train, the skull, that shrill sound made by the train while it is being uh, and while it is entering a railway station. But anyway, amidst all his noise, all the noise he starts reading. He resumes what he was doing and that is reading. Now he mentions what is seen in each and every station. Once we started though, we passed them, grinning and pomaded, Girls in parodies of fashion, heels and veils, all posed irresolutely watching us go as if out on the end of an event waving goodbye to something that survived it. So we have proceeded to the next stanza. We have run on lines proceeding to the next stanza and stopping at the middle of the line, enjambment. So once we started the journey, we had actually passed a few girls. The girls are grinning and pomaded. Pomaded, they have styled their hair accordingly for the wedding. But the way they have styled themselves is mentioned to be in parodies of fashion. So in these lines, the poet refers to the economic class that the girls belong to because they are not actually fashionable but they are imitating what is in trend heels and veils all post irresolutely 
indecisively these girls are standing in the platform all post they do not know what else to do other than standing there like a model watching us go as if out on the end of an event waving goodbye to something that survived it what is the event here wedding what is something that survives the wedding the couple so the woman the girls standing at the railway station are now waving goodbye to the traveling couple who are probably out on their honeymoon so the poet says that once we started there were girls in the railway station who had been there accompanying the couple and now waving goodbye to them it has been there at each station but he did not notice that at first he did not notice this noise made by the people who have gathered in the platforms bidding goodbye to the newly wedded couple but now in the next stanza we can see that he is now trying to see what is happening actually in the platform struck i leaned more promptly out next time more curiously and saw it all again in different terms okay so at first i did not notice what was happening in the platform but as soon as it struck my eyes struck i leaned more promptly out next time so in one station particularly i noticed that there were people gathered in the platform and there was this huge noise made there so i thought that it's something interesting and i had this curiosity so i leaned myself out uh, to to see what is happening outside the window and what did i see i saw it all again in different terms so whatever i saw in each station was just the same thing only that the colors were different the faces were different and i saw it all again in different terms now there is a call and given here that call and explains what did he see in each and every platform the fathers with broad belts under their suits and semi foreheads mothers loud and fat an uncle shouting smut and then the perms the nylon gloves and jewelry substitutes the lemons mauves and olive ochres that marked off the girls unreally from the rest and then the perms perm is a hairstyle where the hair is curled the bangs of hair are curled the nylon gloves and jewelry substitutes the lemons mauves and olive ochres that marked off the girls unreally from the rest okay so i saw that girls were there earlier we have seen that they are all imitating fashion they are parading fashion so they have perms okay they have curled their hair now they are wearing nylon gloves and the jewelry that they are wearing are all substitutes maybe not really diamond or platinum or gold they are jewelry substitutes and then the colors are mentioned the lemons mauves and olive ochres are all different colors and all these colors and their accessories their dresses their hairstyles everything marked off the girls unreally from the rest okay so these particularly styled girls who have parodied the trending fashion are distinct easily distinguishable from the rest because they look really unreal and then yes from cafes and banquet halls up yards and bunting dressed coach party annexes the wedding days were coming to an end okay so he mentions the places where usually the ceremonies are held the wedding ceremonies are held Mm, wedding ceremonies can be held in cafes or banquet halls or coach party annexes where uh, bunting means flag flags are uh, hoisted finally the wedding days were coming to an end so the scene that the poet is seeing in each and every platform in each and every railway station 
shows the couple being bid goodbye by their relatives and each and every station the same scene is enacted in only in different terms so it showed that the wedding days were coming to an end so if we look at the two stanzas we can see that the context of the title is being brought into the wits and weddings refers to the weddings that are usually held in the season of witsen and he notices that no there is a very irritating noise that weddings make particularly at railway stations he did not first notice it because sun destroys the interest of what is happening in the shade either it is too hot outside so that, that you can't see what is happening out, uh, in the platform or you are too exhausted that you lose the energy to look at what is happening anyway he sees the mundane sceneries that you have uh, certainly seen around a train journey and he went on reading but as one incident struck his eye he was curious to know more about the same incident happening in the next stations what did he actually see he sees girls who have fashioned themselves imitating the trend and whatever he sees outside is not a very positive picture the relatives there the fathers are having dull foreheads the mothers are loud and fat the uncles standing there shouts obscene language and then the curls and the nylon gloves and the jewelry substitute and the various colored dresses that the girls are wearing are all unreally demarcated from the rest so those few lines shows the lower economic class of the girls standing there um you can see that from the accessories that they are wearing and from cafes and banquet halls and coach party annexes the season of bits and weddings are coming to an end